Hey, what's up guys? This is Brian at Whisper Status 74. Welcome to the community. Welcome to the channel. If this is the first time you are seeing me, please consider liking and subscribing. We are real tech for real people. Today's video will be discussing when to buy your next panel. We have the Super Bowl sales are already live. It is January going on February. The new panels are coming out in March. Which time is it best for you guys to make this large purchase? All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I am actually in the Biltmore Millennium Hotel in Los Angeles. That's why the lighting isn't great and I don't have a microphone. But I wanted to continue to bring content to you guys. Today or this period of time is a very important time for all of you looking to purchase a display that you've had your eye on. Some of you have been looking for displays and doing your research for the last few years. It's a very dicey time this time of year. With Black Friday having come and gone, now we are in the new year, meaning we have new models and new technology coming out this year, leaving many of you in a weird spot on not knowing which display to purchase. The challenge with this year more than any other is last year we had shortages due to all the reasons that we know, really small allocations. So this period of time, um, you purchasing displays from last year and this year is much smaller than it's ever been. Now, while we're doing this video, when you're done with this video, do me a favor and look up the panels that you're interested in, even if it's last year's C1, um, A80J, TCLs, Hisense. Look back at last year, you'll see that the inventory is very small. And even go back one further, go back to the LG CX, and you'll find they are no longer there. Times past or years past, you can actually go back more than last year and find some great prices on some panels that you've always been looking for. But this year, more than ever, that time or that period of time is gonna be more narrow than ever. Holding back for that panel to drop a few hundred dollars, you may actually lose your opportunity. Now, for many of you, you have to realize if you do buy a panel now and it goes on sale, within your return window, the retailer will typically match your sale price or the new sale price and give you the difference so you don't have to be worried about pulling the trigger too soon and being caught out the reason i mentioned last year's inventory is that it dwindled and with some companies like sony releasing their panels very late those aren't dropping as fast as they should have panels such as the x95j samsung on the other hand releases their panels so early in the year their inventory is nearly gone now, Samsung, typically their panels are very high at launch and they drop, especially in their AK lineup. So if you're looking for the Q1900A, keep your eye on that. It will continue to drop. You can probably wait on that one, but this year, again, is going to be difficult. The reason why I want to do this video is I've had some questions on panels like the Z8H. Not last year's Z9J, but the Z8H. Now, the reason panels like that are, they're very expensive, they're very coveted. They do drop in price as they linger. And you can go for that if that's what you're looking for. But where I say maybe don't is that the Z8H, as much as I love that panel, has last the generation before's processor. 8K panels from a few years ago, there's no guarantee those codecs are gonna work with 8K coming. So chasing maybe the panel you really wanted in the back of your mind a couple years ago it's something that's a real, really hard for me to recommend. It's hard for me to recommend you going back a couple years. Now, certain panels, even the AAH, I'll put it up on screen if I can find it, which was a very popular, um, same year as the Z8H, they were popular, but they weren't really valued the way they should have been at that time. The AAH now costs the same as the A80J, so be very careful in choosing that. Also, if you're gonna buy now, be mindful that even if you've done your research with CES, you are gonna see panels dropping this year in tighter clusters. You're gonna see a lot March, uh, January, February, March, April, May, those three. You're even gonna see Sony's um, Q, QD OLEDs dropping in May. It's not gonna be like it was last year where it's scattered throughout the year. They're gonna be more focused this year. Now, Tyson, uh, Hisense, TCL, and companies like Vizio, they do scatter their products throughout the year. You really have to wait for them to make up their mind when they're gonna release. 
big reason why I have a hard time recommending them is it's very hard to delineate sometimes which year is which. So from you guys, keep an eye on the technology you're looking for, whether it's an LED, mini LED, or OLEDs. Also, when you go, this is gonna sound counterintuitive. I will say do not chase features. If you're looking for something like Sony, and you're looking for VRR, and you're looking for Dolby Vision Gaming, you have to buy these panels as they are right now, not what they will be. And they are excellent panels, the picture quality is gorgeous, but do not chase features. I would always go picture quality first. Now, if you're somebody who is big into gaming, the LG C1, the C2, the G1, the G2, they're always excellent choices as they have all of those built into them already. Going backwards though, also realize that while you may not be chasing features, going back in time, you may be losing features. We went through this with the C9 and the C8. C8 was there, um, equally as beautiful as the C9 a number of years ago, but the lack of a certain feature made one feel more archaic than the other. So keep in mind that your panel, like the Z8H, in your mind, and again, if you have the Z8H, I love the panel, I think it's great. Chasing panels from a few years ago, they will also not be updated, maybe not at all. So even panels like the Z8H, though it was 8K, HDMI 2.1, it might not be something that you um, that will be updated. The panels is very important to you guys. Even the group now that has bought the A90J from last year is concerned they won't have the updates with the end with the um, the K series. Though the A90J is going to carry over, they're very concerned with that. The farther back you go, the more you risk panels not being updated at all. To me, it's not a bad thing. A lot of these updates don't bring anything other than operating system changes. If you like the panel for what it is now, it's a safe buy. Um, I wanna cover quickly open boxes or buying used TVs. The panel lottery being what it is, I can't recommend that. I also only recommend buying from authorized dealers. Quickly, we're gonna go back to the open box. Many of you have had very good luck with open box panels. And even before I dive into that further, Remember, everything that we're talking about here is within your budget, what you can afford. As we get to this time of year, um, as the prices fall, our eyes get bigger and our budget tends to sway. Sometimes you say to yourself, well, this one, I, I did want this TV, but I really wanna reach for that one. Don't give up the features you wanted in a smaller one at times to chase the larger one. And don't, what I mean by that is don't go buying a panel from two years ago that might be outdated because um, you had your eye on it back then. Like the Z8H, again, was an untouchable panel for many of you, and now it's relatively affordable. Great panel, if that's what you know you want, go ahead and grab it, it's very affordable. The 85 inch isn't even available anymore, but just know you're buying something that is what it is, it will not change. Updates are not gonna go there. You may not have AK functionality with new streaming, it's just something to keep mindful of. The HDMI 2.1 may never be updated on that panel. A great deal out there now is the 75 inch 950H. I had the small one, I love that panel. But know you're buying that panel as it is what it is. It will not change. If HDMI 2.1 is very exciting for you, you have to be last year or newer. For me, many of those gaming features that I coveted, um, I do have the new consoles and a PC. It's not as important to me as it was, but it may be more important as we go forward, as we go forward. And when you're thinking about buying new TVs, always keep your usage in mind. What percentage, think about that, what percentage are you gonna use it for? Is it, um, I'll give you an example. My LG C1 is in a small home theater. It is 90% gaming, which is why I chose that particular panel. 10% movies. That follows with streaming, shows, things of that nature. No regular TV viewing, no cable viewing. So for me, even up conversion of a low bit rate isn't as important as it may be upstairs in the living room. It sees no light at all, so an OLED is a great choice for me. Know that information before you chase what anyone else says about OLEDs being better than LEDs. They do suffer in a very bright room. They can actually become mirrors in a bright room. You might want to look towards Samsung this year with that great uh, reflection coating and handling and how they literally swallow up light, um, bright LEDs. 
Also think about when you're buying this year, um, if you're gonna choose between a lower or mid-range Sony, Samsung, or LG, if you have a flagship Hisense or TCL there, there's gonna be that area where you can get, say, full array local dimming on the Hisense or the TCL, and maybe lose those options with an X80 or something like that in the Sony lineup, or in, say, the six or seven series with the Samsung. Knowing all these things is very important. But right now, more than ever, if you're looking to pull the trigger on last year's panels, I want you to make sure that that's something that you really, really want. If you have your eye on a C1, look for where the prices are and pull the trigger. The C2 will offer some improvements, maybe Evo panels that are smaller. They might be a little bit brighter. The processor is being retooled a bit. Think about what is important there for you. I will tell you though, this year more than ever, once the C2 launches and the G2 launches, you are gonna see the inventory on the C1 evaporate. There are no CXs available. A lot of the C1s are already selling out in their different sizes. There are a lot of sizes involved. You'll find the same thing with Sony's A80J. Their lineup will also disappear. The X95 was released very late. I do feel they may not have released as many as they could have as the X95K will be here in March. We are now in mid-January. So you see how small this is. If I was buying right now and I wasn't sure like you guys, I would take that chance between waiting for these new panels to arrive to see if we'll have another price drop. These um, Super Bowl sales, I know with Sony, they're only really into the third week of February and then they go back up you may see another drop. But keep in mind again, more than ever, that amount of time is slimmer than it's ever been. There just isn't the inventory. And you are gonna see, if you look up on Amazon, right now, type in your favorite panel, the one you're looking for from last year, you're gonna see that very few of them are available. And when buying from Amazon, I only buy, or Amazon, I only buy from certified sellers and dealers or directly from Amazon. This goes back to the open box aspect of it. Now back to what we said about open box, many of you have had very good luck with them. The reason I don't trust them is that I have returned a number of panels with a number of dead pixels to a few different Best Buys. A lot of flash lighting, I've had lines through the screen. I've seen those panels, the ones I returned, the exact ones for sale as open box with no literature delineating why they're there. All you see is open box and even mine were on display, but because they were in a bright room, you couldn't see what was wrong with them. So I even tested this in several Best Buys, asked the, or asked the salesman what was wrong with those panels. At the time they were KS 9000s and KS 9500s. I asked them and they said, the owner simply didn't like them and returned them. That's not true. I returned them because there's a number of dead pixels. That's why I'll always judge it that way. Also open boxes, a lot of times you'll see them thrown around. These panels are very delicate. The boxes aren't as thick as they used to be. If you do want to do an open box, make sure you have a store warranty for another year. And if you want to give it a chance, give it a chance. What I do like about open box is once in a while, it does make you um, able to step up to a panel you wouldn't normally afford. Just keep in mind, guys, that the picture quality or I say the panel lottery is alive and well. You may have issues and really, I would never do it and I would ne never recommend it. Now, the reason why I say buy from an authorized retailer, if you do not, the company or the manufacturer does not have to go by the warranty. You don't get that one year warranty from whatever group you buy it from. Also, many people in the community and people I know have had a lot of bad luck with some of these very random websites delivering the wrong panel. Then you get into this war of switching it out and sometimes they just keep going until you lose steam. Hard to recommend buying from those companies. So if you see something like a Z9G or a very high-end panel on sale for $1,000, that is not gonna be real. So you have to be very, very careful. Stay with authorized retailers, even your Costco's, your Walmart's, your Target's. The best part about something like a Costco, Costco, if you're a member, you have 90 days, no questions asked. So that's something that I would definitely look to stay with there. Sorry, getting a call. 
So something like a Costco, if you were going in there, you have three months as a member. Costco now has higher end panels than they used to. Um, at your Best Buys, if you're an elite member, a Best Buys return window is more than it used to be, and so on and so forth. But that's really a lot of the advice I would give you now. Keep an eye on what you want. Get it down to a few manufacturers and your use case. And think about if you're there and you don't know if you should upgrade. If you're somebody who has a panel already and you're on the fence about upgrading, what I would do is really hang back. Let this year come out. Before February, or yeah, before March, before they release, sometimes you buy the quickest panel. And this is what I wanna to touch on really, really quickly. This is really more of a tech therapy buyer's advice. Let's just say, I'm gonna use an example. The X95K is probably the most exciting panel on the market or what's coming out for two reasons. It's a mini LED and it also has the backlight master drive that so many of us love from the Z9D and the Z9G. The Z9K, those two, the Z9K will be extremely high end. You'll see very few reviews on that panel as it will be huge, it'll be too expensive. Always wait for thorough reviews, not just from YouTube people like myself, from published reviews that you trust. Don't just get one or two. I would never buy a panel sight unseen. I would never just order the X95K and say it's got the backlight mesh draft, let me get it. What you want to wait and see is what the contrast ratio is. What's its peak brightness? What's its motion handling? Some of the most amazing panels in, the, in history have a very slow pixel response. That will affect all of your gaming or your movies, your fast pace. So I would always wait for thorough reviews. The best part about buying panels from just last year is that they are so thoroughly reviewed from large publications, guys like myself, and then also on YouTube. Check out the user videos of people that actually have those panels. Things like the Samsung QN90A caught some flack when it came out, has been updated and is now much better. Samsung QN900A, Q80A. A lot of these panels are out there now. As they dwindle, at least you have all of the reviews from, and take as many as you can. You trust a reviewer, follow that one, and then review as many as you can. That is the one, um, other than value, that's the real advantage to purchasing last year's panels. But trust me when I tell you, they are gonna disappear very rapidly. You have your heart set on one, grab it. And now you have, as I mentioned earlier, the return window to be able to return, um, or not return, but if you do, let's say it this way, if you do buy a panel, it goes on a heavy sale, they will usually credit you the difference. So don't be afraid to spend a few extra hundred if it's within your wheelhouse and if it drops, it drops. So if you have your heart set on a C1, on an A80J, on a TCL, on a Hisense, I would recommend grabbing that panel now. If you've done your research, you know what you want, I would grab those. Now many of you are also concerned about these new panels. Thinking about something like say the G2, the C2, you're saying to yourself, well, I have this, but I want to buy a C1, it's this price, what will the C2 launch at? A lot of times you're going to see a much larger price. I think the X95 and a lot of those panels will be very expensive. The QD OLEDs are going to be off the charts expensive. If you're bleeding edge, sight unseen, buy it, grab it, you're good to go. But if you're like most of us, I would hang back and buy the one you've researched. You're comfortable with that you've been watching the c1 for a long time i would maybe even wait for the c2 to come out see that get reviewed you'll see the c2 in panels that are in that area they'll be reviewed very early but i would not buy one without having it reviewed having the cx i had the cx right at launch being on this platform you better believe i was very nervous to have a cx compared to the c9 to me the c9 is a punchier oled I didn't know that, so when I was watching reviews, I was very like, oh, did I buy the wrong one? Don't put yourself through that. The panels you want, if you're positive that's the one you want, pull the trigger now as it drops a little bit, and then give yourself that little bit of a window where you can always get the rebate or the adjustment from the retailer. Those of you that want next year's panels, I would still say, even if you want a Sony or a Samsung or LG, you will have the entire year. They are releasing 
early or at least on time this year. But do not just grab one. For instance, if you say you want something like a C2, don't just grab that until you see it fully, fully reviewed. A lot of times it takes a while to get the kinks out of the technology. So I would then, going back to what I'm saying, um, authorized dealers, be very, very careful with open boxes. If you do want something from last year, be mindful that the inventory is totally depleted. Amazon now at least does, hey, we only have five left. Only buy again from authorized retailers. I, and back to that, I never ever recommend buying used TVs unless you know the person. For me, for instance, if I sell my TVs, you at least follow me, you know my research, you know that my panels are lightly used, you see me on the platform. It's hard to say that on Craigslist or any of these other, Amazon, Facebook, unless they let you come into their home and they can bring that, you can bring that TV to life and test it, it's hard for me to recommend buying used TVs. TVs. If you're buying them from an influencer or somebody like that, at least you know they're selling them on their Patreon, then it's a little different. You're following like an influencer who you know takes care of their stuff. Other than that, I would recommend that. So that group is taken care of. Remember, when you're buying something from a few years ago, it is what it is. It will not improve. This year coming up, a lot of exciting technology, mini LED, backlight master drive, Samsung's uh, very sleek. They're very samey, but you're going to see the QD OLEDs. If you're somebody that wants a QD OLED, hard for me to recommend you buying them this year. They will be 55 inches and 65 inches. They will not be large. They will be very, very expensive. With Value Electronics, we're going to see, you'll see me and Shane from Spare Change. We'll be doing a mini shootout with the A90J with Robert against the QD OLED from Sony. Wait for that stuff to come out before you make that plunge and know that years after, that price will fall and the sizes will grow. So that is really all I have to say when it comes to what you should buy, when you should buy. Um, I'm not against buying online. The challenge I have, and I've said this in many videos, with TCL and Hisense, I am a fan of those companies. You don't see me review them much. I don't have access to them meaning that I can't show you them in store. Um, they're, they're a sight unseen type of brand. If you like those models, it is taking a chance. I would still wait for those models to be fully reviewed from publications that you trust. But again, this year, very exciting. Even though things are open and they're closed, there is a lot of exciting technology coming. You're seeing brighter OLEDs. You're seeing mini LEDs have their second, third, fourth year. You're seeing 8K maybe coming to the forefront. We'll see what AK offers this year. So a very cool year, very exciting year. Hopefully you guys have more of the game systems and consoles are more readily available for you this year. But that's the advice that I have. And this year I would say, as I mentioned, wait for the reviews to come out, be patient, stay within your budget, and I think we'll have a lot of fun. I know this year I'm gonna be showing as much content as I possibly can. I personally am away in California with something with my daughter and I'm still trying to put content no matter where I am. So watch me and those I collaborate with. We're gonna do a lot of content. I'm gonna get as many of these panels home for you from Value Electronics, as many Sony, Samsungs, and LGs as we can. You may see a new panel for me replacing my C1. I will test them, I will game on them. We'll do as much as we possibly can. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Brian at Whisper Status, Whisper Status 74. This is a tech therapy video on when to buy, how to buy, and what you think you may be able to do. We'll also be doing more speakers and projectors as we are teaming up more with Shane and others. It's gonna be a very exciting year. I'm very excited that you guys are there. Let me know what you think in the comments. Any buying um, advice you have for anybody in our community, please put it in the description, description, in the comments below. Tell people what you think and please share your experiences. If you're somebody who's had success with open box, talk about it. If you're somebody that's got better experiences with one manufacturer or the other, talk about it. I just ask that you keep the toxicity to a minimum. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Love you guys. Take care.